there's always a reason why I give myself at least 24 hours before every game, win or loss, to collect my emotions, to collect my thoughts, and to make sure that I give the most you know logical take that I can give without putting so much emotion into it. That idea, that ideal mindset hasn't served more than it is like the past 24 hours because that was embarrassing. There's just no way around it. The Ravens found a way to once again embarrass themselves at home against a team that they are better than. Some people would say that, hey, Cleveland should be a Super Bowl contender. And you know what? They should be a Super Bowl contender. They have an, they have an elite defense. They've got good skilled players. And they got a Deshaun Watson that who is, who's starting to find it. Looks like he's starting to find his footing to look like the old Deshaun Watson that we've gotten to know over the past decade, almost. So, yeah, Cleveland should be considered a Super Bowl contender. They should be considered a really, they're, they're a really good team. I said this earlier in the season that they were a very good team. That don't mean I think they're better than the Ravens. I just don't. Guys, we got to think about we got to think about how this game went. It's fourth quarter. Ravens go up twenty four to nine. And you can you can talk about Lamar's interceptions and the first interception he threw was was awful. It was a bad throw. Y'all know I will defend Lamar Jackson until the cows come home, but I will also be the first person to point out when he had a bad game. It was a bad game. The greatest quarterbacks in the world have all had bad games. We saw we saw Joe Burrow lose to C.J. Stroud at home. He threw he threw two interceptions. But I've come to understand that we're not going to talk about Lamar in the same breath as Burrow and Patrick Mahomes because of what they've done in the postseason. I guess in a way, this that's just the sports media's way of saying that hey, Lamar Jackson, we recognize your greatness, but it matters about what you did in the postseason. And so far, that's what that's his record is what it is. He's got a chance, I think, to really rectify that. But yesterday was like one of those games where, as a Ravens fan, you get you get ticked off because you think I mean well you know that you're you're the better team and you're at home. But if you're a Lamar, if you're a Lamar fan like I am, if you're a guy that's defended Lamar Jackson so much, yesterday is one of those times where it's like it's hard it's hard to really defend you. We love you. We still we're so we're glad that you're our quarterback. We're glad that you got your money that you deserved. But yesterday, yesterday is one of those days where like it's hard to defend you. You know, you got you got to like kind of take everyone, everyone killing us. Because once again, Ravens lose. They're one of the first topics to be to be discussed on every new, news, every sports news channel that we can find. Every sports show we can find. The Ravens blew another lead. Imagine, I just, it's almost like if they won, it's like would they even be talked about against another against another really good team in this in the division that I think, quite frankly, is the best division in football. I told you guys this from the beginning, from the start of the season, that the AFC North would be the best division in football, and look where we are today. We have all four teams over five hundred, all four teams in position to potentially take a playoff spot. There's no other division in football that's doing that right now. So let's take, let's take into account that all four AFC North teams have proven to be um, significant in November. They all have a chance to make it to the playoffs. These are not easy wins. These are not easy games. There are no easy opponents in our division. Everyone is good. But if you're a Ravens fan, can you really sit here and say definitively that there's a team in the AFC, hell, a team in the NFL that is honestly that much better than you? I'm telling you, with all bias aside, I don't see a team in the NFL that truly outclass the Ravens. Like, there's no, like, they have no shot at beating them. I don't see it. You keep, Kansas City, look, I think Kansas City can be beat. I just honestly, I just genuinely think that. I think it's very, it's it gotten more dependent on Travis Kelsey and Mahomes trying to make something out of nothing now more than ever. And they don't have a, a threat at wide receiver that you look at and you should be scared of. You're scared of Travis Kelsey. Let's, don't, don't get it twisted. Travis Kelsey is still an, ult, an ultimate weapon. And Mahomes is the ultimate, you know, he's the next, you know, the guy, the guy that's supposed to you know, catch Brady and be the greatest quarterback of all time if he hasn't caught that feet already just off of talent alone but I think they can be beat Miami has shown that they're vulnerable Buffalo is fighting for their playoff lives right now and so is Cincinnati Baltimore's beating Cincinnati and you can go to the NFC if you want Philadelphia 8-1 and one, they've been skating by but they're vulnerable especially on defense they've you know they've shown vulnerability and they've shown that they can be beat 
The Niners, they just got finished. They just got done snapping a three game losing streak, showing their vulnerability. Detroit, we saw what Baltimore did to Detroit. That's the number two team in the NFC. Seattle Seahawks were leading the NFC West division before they came to Baltimore. We saw what happened there. So my point is, Ravens fans aren't irrational when they get pissed off at their team because it's it's so it's irritating and it's just like it 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 just rakes your nerves that you see your team blowing leads like this at home, losing to teams that they should that these flat out should not lose to because. I mean, yeah, we know every NFL team is, has the ability to be anybody on any given Sunday, but we're, I'm looking at this logically. The Ravens are a great team. They have everything they need to win a Super Bowl. I don't say this because I'm a Ravens fan and my emotions are behind it. I'm saying this because like, I look at this team, I look at the rest of the NFL, I don't see a team that the Ravens can't beat. I genuinely, I genuinely believe that looking at it from an analyst perspective. But to put my fan hat back on, it's frustrating and irritating. I think I can probably speak for the whole city of Baltimore who's into, who's into the Ravens. How irritating that was yesterday to watch. How embarrassing that was. Leaving the stadium and going home, having to deal with this for, for, for the majority of the week. It shouldn't have happened. Once again, all this talk about Cleveland's the number one defense. They gave up the, le- they gave up the least amount of points in the NFL. The offense just put 24 points up on the board against them. And Deshaun Watson gave him another seven from, from the start of the game. It's 31 points. That's enough to win a football game. You were up 31, what was it, 24 to 9. Then it was then it was 31 to 17. And then the pick six happened. Look, Lamar, Lamar's pick six, it sucked, but it was a great play by, by the defense that was made. It was bad at the guy, the defender jumped up in the air and tipped the pass, timed the time the ball perfectly. And it landed on, on, on into a, a Cleveland defender. That's a great play by the defense. We want to blame Lamar for that. Fine. I mean, he's a quarterback. He's going to get. He's going to get the blame when he loses. You know, Lamar Jackson's going to be blamed. The number one person to blame whenever he loses, because he just simply is not allowed to lose. Because when he does lose, it goes to he doesn't have the skills to be a a, a great championship NFL quarterback. It's hard to trust Lamar Jackson. It's hard to be to stay with these guys, stay with the Ravens. But when they win, they don't talk about that. So what? I mean, I, I beat, I'll, I'll beat it like a drum until you, until people hear me. That's what that's what it is with Lamar. He can't lose. He can't he can't screw up and he can't lose. It's just the way it's, it's just the way it's going to be for his entire career until he wins a championship. Because Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, all these guys are going to get the benefit of the doubt. It's just the way it is. I mean, I know I know that I'm happy Lamar's my quarterback. I don't care what anybody say out there. I'm happy Lamar's our quarterback. I'm glad we paid this man. I believe in him. He sh- he made me a believer a long time ago when I when even I was on the outs. So I'm not worried about Lamar. And we got and we as Ravens fans, including myself, have to turn this page very quickly because we have another dangerous team coming in again in the AFC North. One of the better teams in the NFL in the AFC North coming to the coming to Mammoth Bank Stadium on Thursday night to try and get a win. We got to put this game behind us. If I'm the Ravens, I'm just going in confident because once again, I had this game won, just close the deal. That's all you got to do is close the deal. It's not that the Browns were better than you. It's not that there was nothing you could do to withstand the Cleveland Browns for how good of a team they are. You had them beat. Just You just got to close the deal. That's all it is. You've beaten Cincinnati before, in Cincinnati. Now, here's a new narrative. Joe Burrow was injured last time when he played. So there's an asterisk, once again, there's an asterisk next to the win in Cincinnati when it comes to the Ravens. But we don't like to talk about how like like how Cincinnati has beaten us. They, they've beaten our backup quarterbacks the past two games in Cincinnati. They beat him in that season finale, and they beat him in the playoff game against our backup quarterbacks because Lamar Jackson was injured. When Lamar Jackson plays... They've won. They've lost, what, one game against Cincinnati? No one wants to talk about that because, again, this is Lamar Jackson. He's just going to be judged differently than everyone else. So with that record that Lamar has against Joe Burrow, the the quarterback who is definitively better than he is, let's go. Everyone, look, Cincinnati and Baltimore both came off of tough losses with game-winning field goals. They lost at home. They're both going to be hungry. Both teams are a little banged up. It don't matter. The NFL doesn't care. 
def- damn sure doesn't care when the Ravens have injuries they deal with. So we're not trying to we're not trying to hear anything about the injuries that that Cincinnati's dealing with, and they're significant. It looks like Trey Henderson and T. Higgins might be out for this game. So if the Ravens win, the asterisk would be, oh, Cincinnati once again wasn't in full strength. It's fine. We'll take the win. If the Ravens show up, how we know, how everyone knows they can show up, how they've shown more than on more than one occasion that they are capable of showing up. It's just a matter of which Ravens team is going to show up. Grand scheme of things with this loss, it's not – it's a, it's a heavy one to take. It's a tough one to deal with, but it's not a critical loss because of everything that happened throughout the landscape of the AFC. The Ravens are still sitting at the number two seed in the AFC because Jacksonville got their doors blown off by San Francisco for 34-3. to And then I just talked about the Houston Texans knocking off Cincinnati. So essentially Baltimore didn't move. They didn't go up. They didn't go down. Kansas City was on a bye week, so they're still sitting at number one. Again, it's, it's a tough loss, you know, Ravens embarrass themselves at home. You can't have that when you're winning against a, against a. You can't give a great team like that life, because that's what what happens Sunday is exactly what happens when you start turning the ball over and when you start taking your foot off the gas. Where was Keaton Mitchell? Where was Gus Edwards? Where was the run game? That's my that's my biggest question is what happened to the run game. There's no reason why Keaton Mitchell did not get a carry in the second half. There's no reason why the running game was abandoned. You're, you got a lead. Start killing the clock. Start running the football. I know you got to mix it up and everything, obviously, but don't abandon the run. Keaton Mitchell has proven to be a really – hes I think he's proven to be already be a good player. He needs to get more, more snaps and more, more plays because he's doing, he's doing great things with the foot, when the football is in his hands. Positives, I mean, look, we saw – we got another OBJ side for, for a touchdown. Again, able to, move the, able to move the ball. Offensively, I thought they did enough to win the game. I got to look at this – I got to look at this defense, and I haven't – really had to say that all season long but the defense to a degree let us down it's tough to say that because because of how great they played all season long but you gotta you guys gotta hold that lead you gotta get Deshaun Watson on the ground you gotta stop David Njoku from carrying three four views to get an extra five six yards and then and then the run game got going with Cleveland so if I'm more if, if there was any concern to take away from this game I'm not worried about Lamar I'm not. I'm not concerned about that. Bad games are going to happen. I, I believe in Lamar Jackson. He's shown me enough times to believe in him. I got to look at the defense and saying that that was a little bit. I was a little concerned to see. I think the game really turned when Marlon Humphrey had that injury and then and then come back. I think that's when the game turned. And the momentum kind of was like shifted with the defense. I feel like a little bit of air got 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 taken out of him because Marlon Humphrey's Marlon Humphrey's a great player. You know, obviously, you lose a guy that in the middle of a game, it has the ability to kind of, like, take the wind out of you. So I feel like that's what happened with the defense. They kind of got gassed, and they kind of got the wind taken out of them. But like I said, got to turn the page. Thursday night, we got the Cincinnati Bengals coming into town. Big-time division, big time divisional game. Got to have it, in my opinion. I think we got to have it. We're at home. I know that Baltimore is going to be ready. We just, we, just want to see our, we just want to see our team close the deal because they're capable of great things this season. I've seen enough to believe that. It's up to, it's, so it's really it's on them. Which Ravens team is going to show up? We'll find out.